2020 has ushered in an era of remote work, and a home office is now no longer a novelty. It is the new norm. As a large segment of the workforce is moving remote, having a workspace with the right equipment and technology is a huge plus for productivity. It's 2022, I just upgraded my home office, and I wanted to give you a tour of my setup. It's only right if I start with my desk setup, the place in my office where I spend most of my time. I switched my desk from a 98 inch wide Colby tabletop to a 71 inch sit stand desk from a brand called Finer Crops to create more space in my room for other elements that I will talk about in a bit. What attracted me the most to this desk was the matte black finish. I think it really looks sleek. The tabletop is laminated, so it's water resistant and durable to minor scratches. And that's a great plus to have. The control panel allows you to have up to four memory presets to adjust its height. I have three memory presets for my desk, one for standing, one for sitting, and one when I'm doing overhead shots for my videos. You can also get the tabletop with different finishes. I'll link this desk in the description below. I am really excited about my new chair from Downex. I always wanted to have a gaming chair and I was sold on the carbon fiber leather finish. It has great lumbar support when sitting upright and can also recline up to 165 degrees. It comes with a retractable footrest where I can sit back, relax and watch TV. The head pillow and the USB powered lumbar pillow massager is definitely a plus. I made a switch from an ultra wide 49 inch monitor to a 32 inch 4K monitor. I will be honest, for me, the novelty of using an ultra wide monitor quickly wore off. Although it had its pros, having multiple windows open at the same time distracted me from my primary work. I also found an increase in neck strain when looking at either end of the screen. My monitor is a 32 inch 4K IPS panel from BenQ. BenQ is renowned for color accuracy because it comes factory calibrated and that is my only reason why I chose this monitor. The monitor also supports Thunderbolt 3, which produces 4K video output and charges my MacBook at the same time. At $1,000, it is expensive, I won't lie, but for my workflow where I use it predominantly for video editing, color accuracy is important. The BenQ monitor comes with its own stand, but I mounted the screen on a single monitor arm from a brand called Wally. On my monitor, I've attached the BenQ screen bar, which is the best desk lamp option in my opinion. And having a lamp attached to the top of the monitor is definitely a space saving solution. I also use my iPad Air as a second screen using the sidecar feature to wirelessly connect whenever I have need to have an additional window. The iPad is on a stand from a company called Lamical, which allows me to tilt and rotate the screen the way I like. I found this desk shelf on Amazon as an addition to my setup and I like how it stands out. I also find it handy for storing my accessories when I use my desk for overhead camera shots. The desk pad I chose is from a brand called Delta Hub. It's made from a synthetic felt material, adds good aesthetics and the additional grip at the bottom prevents any unnecessary movement and that is always a good feature to have isn't it? A highly recommended desk accessory in my opinion at a price way less than some premium desk mats out there. My keyboard is a very popular choice for many when you think about wireless mechanical keyboards, the Keychron K2. I always choose the cherry brown switches for such keyboards because it's a good middle ground between gaming and typing with good tactile feedback that is not as loud as the red switches can't have a keyboard and not have a palm rest. The perfect pairing to the Keychron K2 is this wooden palm rest made by Keychron themselves. My mouse is still the MX Master 3 and I've had it for a couple of years now. I can't seem to part ways with this one. I chose the MX Master 3 for its ergonomics and because that is important, I added this wrist rest from Delta Hub. They call this the Carpio 2.0. 
Apart from looking great on my desk, it really helps me with wrist fatigue. Interestingly, Delta Hub also offers it for left hand use. You can also get these wrist pads in different colors. Before I move on to other desk items, I have to speak about the desk drawer. Many of you can tell it is an Alex drawer from Ikea. I went with this nine drawers single unit instead of two side drawers to save space. The gray turquoise definitely gives a pop of color to the space. Moving on, my charging solution is the two-in-one wireless charger that is MagSafe compatible from Anchor. It has a sleek minimal design which drew me towards it. As you can tell, it can charge my AirPods and iPhone 13 Pro at the same time. For my Apple Watch, I got this USB charger that I plugged to my monitor. It's inexpensive and gives a different look to my setup. One of the most useful accessories I found is the power strip clamp to the edge of my desk. It is extremely helpful to charge or power any device. Apart from two plug points, I also have two USB-A ports and a USB Type-C, which is a perfect charging solution. Right next to the charging power strip, I have a headphone hanger clamped to the desk and holds my favorite Bluetooth headphones, which is the Soundcore Q30 from Anchor. Inexpensive with surprisingly great sound. The brain of my desk setup is the M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook that is in clamshell mode on a walnut finish laptop stand. You might think the XDR screen on the MacBook Pro is too good to be kept in clamshell mode. When I'm at my desk, I prefer using a bigger screen. I tend to stay away from using more than one screen if I can. I use my MacBook a lot when I'm away from my desk, which gives me plenty of time to enjoy the wonderful XDR screen. By the way, I'm totally digging the return of the SD card reader. My speaker of choice is the Canto U4 in matte black finish. These bookshelf speakers are Bluetooth enabled and the sound is quite impressive. I might add a subwoofer which Canto also makes to enhance the sound experience. Part of the reason for downsizing my desk was to make space for a TV setup. I use my TV primarily for streaming content and previewing my videos. I don't have a very big room, so I didn't go for the larger screen. I bought the LG C148 inch OLED TV, which I got on a good deal during the Black Friday week. I love LG's OLED panels. However, the one aspect of LG TVs I detest is the UI. It's too cluttered for my taste. So for $40, I got Google's 4K TV. That's so much better with the UI experience. I'm also a very big fan of the remote. The OLED sits on a TV console I spotted on Amazon. It's a great finished piece of furniture. Flawless if I have to use one word to describe the quality of the wooden console. It's got an outlet at the back to neatly route cables. Always something to look for in a TV console. My Amazon Echo Dot 2 sits on the shelf of the TV console. By the way, comment below if you want me to make a video on cable management to show you how I managed to achieve a clean look without exposing cables. I also have a video I made a year ago on cable management. Make sure to check it out. On the other side of my room is my reading nook, where I take time off from work. When it comes to the lighting in the room, I really took some time to plan this out because it really gives a good vibe when it is done properly. The lighting in the room is a combination of lights from Gobi, Philips Hue, CoPower, Ikea, and Nanoleaf. They are all controlled by the light strip behind my desk and the TV are from a company called CoPower. The company sent me their Bluetooth light strips to try out. These are not compatible with Google or HomeKit, but hear me out. They are very inexpensive and can be controlled by Bluetooth using an app. For just $17, you can get a 20 feet lighting strip. I use an compatible smart switch for any light that cannot be controlled by a smart assistant like the CoPower light strip and the IKEA lamp. I am planning to make a separate video on the lighting of the room. So this was my home office tour. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. If you like to see videos on desk setups and accessories or anything tech, make sure to subscribe to my channel. This is Ben from Technologically Curious and this was my home office tour for 2022. I'll catch you in my next video.